I, I think, look, for those of us who are white, we've been socialized to not talk about race. And so it can, it can feel scary to now want to say something and then feel like, oh, but we might mess it up. First and last name is Erin Heaney, and I'm the National Director at Showing Up for Racial Justice. Surge, or Showing Up for Racial Justice, was founded in 2009 um, after Obama was elected. Many white folks across the country were saying, we have a black president, we don't need to talk about race anymore. The reality was that on the ground, what we were seeing was escalated attacks against communities of color and the healthcare debates were also, you know, uh, heavily racialized as well. We really see um, our work is harkening back to the call from the 1960s, actually, um, as the Black Power Movement grew um, and as more Black folks began to take on leadership roles in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, um, there was a call in the mid-60s for um, white folks who were part of those multiracial efforts to return home to their communities, to majority white communities um, where the racism existed and ask, there was an ask for white people to do this work uh, with their own, to organize our own. Some folks did that in small pockets across the country, but you know, that call went largely unanswered. Um, and so we really see the work that we're doing right now as a response to that call. You know, and the call is just as, just as loud in this moment. I think the thing that's really important for us to, to be clear about is that all white folks, regardless of class background, have access to, to some amount of privilege because of their skin color. We as white folks have a stake in this. We're not, we're not just showing up to racial justice work because it's something that we're helping people of color with. One of the most important things we can do for those of us that are white is to break white silence consistently over time. While there will certain things will be different, things will also be different for the better. <laughs> you know, for example, we're having a conversation right now in this country around defunding the police. That makes a lot of white folks nervous, right? Like we were convinced white folks that the police were here to, you know, protect and serve white folks largely. Well, the police are also one of the largest expenditures at the local level. They consistently take up anywhere between 30 and 55% of a budget. The work that we've been doing is helping white folks understand that when we defund the police, not only do we have a world in which uh, it's much less likely that there's gonna be violence, um, and you know the brutal murders of black and brown people, but it also means we're gonna have resources for all the other things that benefit our communities. We're gonna mess up, those of us that are white, we're gonna do it imperfectly, and it's important that we listen to the feedback, listen you know, if we've, if we've made a mistake, but that we stay in the fight. Those in power are really relying on keeping white people silent and separated from movements for justice. So we have a really critically important role to play in being vocal and being active especially in this moment, but also, you know, for the long haul.